Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Let me ask a question. Has God been dealing with you about letting something go and you're still hanging on? It could be a, a, a friendship that's really just not a good friendship for you. Anybody? Uh-huh. Could be a bad attitude. Uh, how about maybe really just somebody that you love that you just keep trying to change them or get them to do what's right and God's been telling you to let it go and give it to him. Something like that. All right. So I just don't see how we can have anything but fun here today. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 1 through 8. We're talking this weekend about using our time wisely. And I do believe that there are certain seasons for things where there's a particular anointing from God to do a certain thing. And so if this is a season where God is dealing with you to let go of some things, then it's wise to do it in that season because when God is saying the time is now, it's going to be easier to do it when God is dealing with you about it than it is to have to do it at some other time. Amen? To everything, there's a season and a time for every matter or purpose under heaven. <clears throat> a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend, a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Father, we thank you for helping us live in your timing and not miss what you have for us in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. I love John chapter 15. I, I've studied it. I've read it and reread it, and I, I just really enjoy it. Starting out in verse 1, Jesus said, I am the vine and my Father is the vine dresser. Any branch in me, that in me means people who believe in me, any branch in me that does not bear fruit, that stops bearing, he cuts away, trims off, and takes away. So it's God's will for us to bear good fruit. And just like if there's a, a branch on a tree that everything else in the tree is bearing fruit, but this one branch is just not bearing fruit, a good gardener is going to come along and prune that off. If there are areas in our lives that are not bearing fruit, then God will deal with those things and he'll trim them off of our lives or he'll cut them off. It would be nice if we could see what God sees and really be in agreement and say, oh yes, God, that's good. Let's get rid of that thing. But as we all know, we sometimes hang on a lot longer. It's amazing how long we hang on to things that are hurting us. But let's just think of how, how not smart that is how long we hang on to things that are hurting us and really just stealing the life that Jesus wants us to have. But somehow or another, we're so afraid to let go of what we have because what we're going to get, we still don't kind of know or understand. Don't ever be afraid to let God do what he wants to do in your life. He cuts away, trims off, and he cleanses and repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit to make it bear more and richer and more excellent fruit. So I kind of saw something years ago that helped me. Looks to me like here you're pruned if you do and you're pruned if you don't. So 
either way, pruning is a fact of the Christian life. So we might as well, the long and the short of it is, we might as well just let God have his way because he loves us so much. Now get this, God loves you so much that he is never going to leave you alone to do your own thing your own way. Amen? God chastises us. He teaches and trains us by various means out of his love for us. And I could take you to Hebrews 12. Got a lot of stuff in it about chastisement. It's, it's God dealing with us, teaching us, and training us. He does a lot of it spiritually. He does a lot of it by using his word. But as I said yesterday, when you love your children, you would love to give them your word and have them just do what you say. But if they don't consistently after a while, you will touch their circumstances. Now that doesn't mean that God is mean and that he does a lot of things that hurt us. But I think we all realize that sometimes there are things in our life that they are difficult for us and we, we fight giving things up or we fight the changes that God tries to make. But then later on we realize, oh man, that was the best thing in the world for me after all. So today I'm really hoping that by God's grace, I can help all of us to trust God even more and to realize his great love for us that anything that happens in our life, God will ultimately work it out for our good as long as we trust him. And I believe that. That's just not a cute scripture to confess. I believe that. That no matter what happens or where it comes from, if we keep loving God and we want his will, he will take that thing and use it to our purpose. You know, we all want to hear from God. We want to know what God is saying. And God speaks to us in a lot of different ways. The still small voice is probably the greatest way, just that inner knowing. You just know and you don't even know how you know. You just, you just know. But God also does speak through our circumstances. And so many times when I'm trying to make something happen in my life and it's just not happening and I'm wearing myself out trying to kick down doors that it's obvious God is not opening, God is trying to let me know through that circumstance, this is not for you. <laughs> this is not for you. Well, it's just the devil. Well, yes, we do need to resist the devil, but let me tell you something. If God's got something in his will for you to do, Ultimately, there's no devil that can keep it from happening as long as you keep your eyes on God. So let's just don't give the devil more credit than what he actually deserves, amen? So going on now in John, you are cleansed and pruned already because of the word which I have given you, the teachings that I've discussed with you. Dwell in me and I'll dwell in you. Live in me and I will live in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit of itself without abiding in and being vitally united to the vine, neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. Now, how many of you want to bear good fruit in your life? All right. The only way that a branch can bear fruit is if it stays connected to the vine. Now, I've done projects in my meetings where I've brought a living plant out here, and on the first night, I've broken off a branch and laid it somewhere here, and we can watch it throughout the weekend slowly wither up and die. The only way that we can have the life flowing through us to bear good fruit, whether that's the fruit of the Spirit, in simple things like getting along with your family, getting along with people at work, getting out in the world and being a good witness, or rather it's it's other things, the strength that we need to go through difficult things, the strength that we need to do the will of God. The only way that any branch, everybody say, I'm a branch. The only way that any branch can bear good fruit is if it stays connected to the vine. That's why I stay on this thing all the time about spending time with God, spending time with God, spending time with God and realizing that our walk with God is not just a Sunday morning event. Now, you know, a lot of you have taken your weekend to come to this conference, so you kind of probably know that, 
But I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to the millions of people around the world watching by television. And I don't know what kind of relationship that you have with God or if you even have one at all. But I probably would be pretty safe in saying that there's a good number of people watching that you do have a love for God, but your relationship with him is religious. It's one of just following prescribed rules and regulations. You maybe read a little bit of your Bible every day. You pray a little bit every day. You, you go to church on Sunday morning and you feel like that you've done your thing and now you're okay with God. Well, you know what? Maybe you're okay with God, but you're not going to bear any fruit with that kind of life. You're going to be up and down and all over the place emotionally, and the only way you're ever going to be happy is when you're getting your way, and that only lasts for a few minutes at a time. You're not going to be a great witness in the world. You're going to be frustrated all the time. You're going to be struggling all the time. You're going to be hard to get along with. Am I right so far? All right. But when we stay connected to the vine, there is a secret life force that we do not understand and we cannot explain that comes to us from that vine, the vine being Jesus, and without struggling, without frustration, we can bear fruit. You see so many Christians, and I was one for a long time, I'm just, I'm trying to be patient. I'm trying to be happy. I'm trying to be peaceful, and I'm just so frustrated trying to be peaceful. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen an apple tree out in an orchard going, I'm trying to make apples. <laughs> it's apple season. Come on. <laughs> ah, trying to make apples. So we're not going to bear good fruit through just trying and struggling. Now, I, I believe that there is an effort that we make but it's an effort in the Holy Ghost. And so it's a totally different kind of thing than just a fleshly effort. It's really just, then it's like my effort mainly is staying connected to Jesus. My effort is a spiritual effort. I'm believing, I'm trusting God. Let me tell you something. Every day, every moment of your life, you need God's help. Every, there's not a moment in our lives when we do not when we are not desperate, you understand me? Desperate for God's help. If I were you, I would probably say no less than 100 times a day, God help me. God help me. Just help me. You don't even have to know what you need help for because I can guarantee you, you need help for something. <laughs> Just God help me. And I, I, I wish that I could explain the mystery of it to you, but just to sit down. Don't worry so much about what you do when you spend time with God. Well, if I spend time with God, what do I do? Truthfully, and I hope this, you know, is not doctrinally insane, but I don't really think it matters so much what you do. I, <laughs> I think the thing that's important is that you have come to Him. You're giving Him time and by coming to him, you're saying, I'm afraid to start this day without you. I don't trust myself. I need you. Help me. Strengthen me. Now, obviously, when you add studying the word to that and, and you learn principles of prayer and confessing the word, yes, there's a lot of spiritual disciplines that we can practice in that time. But I think that too often people worry about what they're supposed to do, and they have this set formula, and they try to follow it every day, and it won't be long, and you're going to get really bored with it. But if you follow the Holy Spirit, there will be creativity and variety, and you're going to enjoy the time, and you're not even really going to know what happened. You just know that you were, and God was, and there was a connection that you don't understand, and now all of a sudden you've got a brighter outlook on today than you had when you went to spend that time. The more time, the better, but let me tell you something. If you've got two minutes, you can get a divine hookup in two minutes if that's all you've got. When you're about to go over the edge at work, 
go to the bathroom, lock yourself in a stall, and just take, let me tell you something, Dave, when he was, how old were you? 18? When he was 18, Dave was baptized in the Holy Spirit, sitting on the pot at work. Now, what kind of a thing is that to tell people? <laughs> you never know where God may show up. But you know what he did? He'd been searching for something more with God. He was frustrated kind of with Christianity as usual. He knew there was more than just going to church and going home, going to church and going home. And he didn't even know what it was but he'd been seeking something with God. He went into the bathroom at work. He sat down, closed the stall door, and he said to God, I am not getting up. I am not moving from this spot until you touch me and give me whatever it is that I'm missing. <laughs> now I know some of you are thinking, what? is she talking about? <laughs> and you know what? Dave also received a physical healing that day. His eyes were healed. He had to wear glasses prior to that, and God healed his eyes, and for a lot of years, then he didn't have to wear glasses. God definitely touched the man in a profound way. <laughs> if you abide in me, Not just go to church on Sunday morning. Not just watch your favorite TV preacher every morning. <laughs> Whoever that is. But if you abide in me, and my word abides in you, if you live in me, if you dwell in me, if there's a relationship, you will bear much fruit. Amen? And really, I might even go on to say that when you abide in him, even when it comes to the pruning and the things that God is dealing with us about and the things that he wants us to let go of, it's not so bad after all. Because there's a divine strength that comes to us enabling us to do things God's way. Amen? All right. Verse 5, I am the vine, you're the branches. Whoever lives in me and I in him bears much abundant fruit. However, apart from me, cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. Boy, do we ever need to get a deeper revelation on that. If a person does not dwell in me, he's thrown out like a broken off branch and he withers. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire and they're burned. If you live in me, abide vitally united to me, and my word remains in you and continues to live in you. Ask whatever you will, and it will be done for you. Somebody say, wow. wow. And the last verse, when you bear and produce much fruit, my Father is honored and glorified, and you prove yourselves to be true followers of mine. Let's all be people who really want to bear good fruit. Let's don't be the kind of person that just our whole walk with God is just to get him to give us what we want. Let's be more concerned about what we can give to God, how we can represent him, how we can be an ambassador for Christ. If you came here just for me to give you three more secrets on how you can get what you want, that, you know, that, that's not, I'm not bent in that direction. I believe that if we totally give ourselves to God, he will give us what we want. It may not be what we thought we wanted, but it will sure make us happy. It will be the thing that nobody else can give us and we will be so fulfilled. Now, to be honest, when we first start a relationship with God, we're all a pretty good sized mess. We, we, you know, we may have sweet little hearts, but we got lots of dead branches. We got lots of stuff that we're just dragging around with us because we're used to that needs to be dealt with in our life. And in Hebrews chapter 12, 
the Bible says that, well, let, let's just look at it. Hebrews 12, 26 through 29. I'm so glad that you love the Word of God enough to come out and just... It's just wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Verse 26, then at Mount Sinai, his voice shook the earth, but, but now he has given a promise, yet once more I will shake and make tremble, not only the earth, but also the starry heavens. Now this expression, yet once more, indicates the final removal and transformation of all that can be shaken, that is, of that which has been created, in order that what cannot be shaken may remain and continue. So I believe that God will shake everything in our life that is shaky. <laughs> Come on. Everything in our life that is shaky until all that remains is a tree of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, bearing good fruit in every season that he might be glorified. Amen? And I, I don't know about you. I mean, I wish that I could say you can get that by just praying. You can get it by just reading your Bible. But honestly, I just think we're a little more stubborn than that. I really think when it comes right down to it, God has to deal with us about some things. And as we all know, it's not always real pleasant, but it turns out so good in the end. So don't be afraid of God when he begins to deal with you in your life. If things seem to be going a different direction than what you want them to go, just say, God, I trust you. Your will be done and not mine. Let's real quickly look at Proverbs 3.13. Happy, blessed, fortunate, enviable is the man who finds skillful and godly wisdom and the man who gets understanding, drawing it forth from God's word and from life's experiences. You know what? I have, I have a lot of knowledge in my life now and I thank God for what I know. And I've gotten it two different ways, from studying this book and from being alive on planet Earth 71 years and walking through a lot of things, having a lot of experiences in my life. I know what it's like to be abused and what you have to do to overcome that. I know what it's like to hate somebody and have a good reason to hate them. And I know the agony of living in hatred and unforgiveness. I also know what it's like to totally release them, to let it go, and to watch God work in your life. Come on. So please believe me, when I talk to you about these things, all those messages that I have recorded, the books, the CDs, the DVDs, I didn't just come up with some little idea out of a sermon book. That's my life out there on that resource table. And I'm telling you, God is no respecter of persons, and what he does for one, he will do for another. And you can have a great, amazing, wonderful life, but it's not going to be by doing everything your way. It's going to be by letting God have his way. Somebody give God praise. You know, God's timing is not always comfortable for us, but it is always right. We really need to learn to trust God. And what I like to say is let's trust God without borders. And if God is dealing with you to let something go in your life, then know that it's going to be best for you if you just do it. It may not feel good right now, but you will be thankful later. At least that's what I've experienced in my own life. This community likes boys, so they want their boys to go to school first. The girls, they don't have any, any value when it comes to education for them. So if they can get some money for her and not have the burden of having to care for her, 
it helps the family. The flags that you see on the homes over my shoulder represent a long-standing tradition that is very difficult on girls. As soon as a very young girl reaches puberty and she's of childbearing years, you'll see these flags above their houses representing the fact that a young girl is available to a man, essentially on the market, up for sale. And at that point, her life changes dramatically. So what they do is they take him out of school and they'll actually go through different activities, teaching them how to cook, how to be a, a wife in the, in the home. But part of it is also how to please a man. And that's through, you know, normal things in the house, but also sexually. So they teach them different things about sexuality and so on. So we are doing anything that we can to help people understand the value of girls. That's the key. And helping these girls by taking them into a program <laughs> called Imagine Hope. If they would live with us for six months and we would have devotions, lead them to the Lord, really mentor them in how to be a godly woman, and then at the same time teach them how to do some skills, basic things like jewelry making or whatever it is, that they can have some kind of an income that they can bring to their families. This is a good hat. Were you afraid when you thought that you were going to have to be married? Some of my friends, they are already married now, but they are used to suffer in that marriage. So if myself, I was afraid to be married while I'm still young, but because of this program, my mom, she didn't take me through the marriage, but she bring me here so that I can proceed with my education, so that I can help her in future change our situation. I, I'm so grateful. I wish I could bring everyone here and let them see the impact of what's happening. Um, and I'm grateful for it because we should give and we should give to those that we don't benefit us. And I think that's what Hand of Hope does and, and we're grateful for that. We are helping young women like this all over the world. <laughs> Help us to guide, restore, and love young girls. Your designated gift today, if you choose, can go to Project Girl, or you can give toward water, you can give toward feeding, and do something that you know will make a difference. Well, have you ever wanted to help hurting people, but you feel like you can't make a difference? I want you to know that you can. When we work together, we can feed hungry children, rescue women from human trafficking, and help victims of natural disasters. Uh, that's just few of the things that we can do. And I'm asking you, if you're not a partner with our ministry, I'm asking you to partner with us, to become a financial partner with the ministry. And that means that you do something on a regular basis, monthly or, or quarterly, but we need people all over the world helping us so we can keep reaching hurting people. And honestly and truly, what each one of us can do by ourselves is minute compared to what we can do if we put it all together. And so I'm inviting you to join the family today and make an amazing difference all over the world for God's glory. You can be a world changer. That's why no person here tonight or watching by TV, you do not have to have fear in your life that it's too late for you, that you've done too much wrong, that there's no hope for you. You do not have to live in fear because God is the Redeemer. He has bought us back with the blood of Christ and everything in our life can be bought back, worked over and turned into something good. Meer leerzame impulsen vind je op het Joyce Meyer YouTube kanaal. Zoek het maar eens op 